Why do we angle 15 degrees for an AP sacrum if the average sacrum lies in a plane 30 degrees off the horizontal when the patient's supine? The answer to this question, while not completely applicable in the everyday course of your work, it's important to understand if you really want to take pride in your imaging and in your ability to visualize what's going on with the way anatomy is projected onto your image receptor. There's a short answer to this question and a long answer. The short answer is this. Whenever possible, you want to eliminate geometric distortion from your projection. In other words, you want your projected image to resemble the size and shape of the anatomy as accurately as possible. If you shoot straight down onto the sacrum, your image will be foreshortened, and if you shoot perpendicular to the body of the sacrum, your image will be elongated. So you have to shoot somewhere in between. In fact, it just so happens to be exactly halfway in between. Now, the long answer involves some math, but trust me, it'll be worth it. In fact, it's not even really math, it's high school geometry. So in our geometry problem, we are given a few pieces of information. Actually, we're given one piece of information and we will infer or create the rest as we go. What we're told is that the body of the sacrum lies in a 30 degree plane from the horizontal. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create triangles using the body of the sacrum as one side, the tabletop or the horizontal as a second side, and the direction of our x-ray beam as the third side. I'm also going to make up a generic number to represent the length of the sacrum. This is only to compare relative lengths when we change our tube angle. Uh, now really we only need to make one triangle to prove our point but we're going to make three just so that we can really hammer home the idea. First we're going to assign the body of the sacrum a length of six units. This could represent I mean, we could say six inches, but it's not really accurate. I'm just going to say six units because it's, it kind of makes things easier. Uh, so the length of the sacrum is six units. For our first triangle, we're going to point our x-ray beam straight down, vertical, perpendicular to the table. And then this gives us our three sides. And since we're shooting straight down, we've also created a 90 degree or a right angle. And since we already know that the angle opposite the short side here is 30 degrees and we know from our old geometry rules that all the angles in a triangle always add up to 180 degrees we can determine that our third angle then is 60 degrees 30 plus 90 plus 60 is 180 we also know from our old friend Pythagoras that in any right triangle a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared where a, b, and c are the sides of a right triangle with c being the side opposite the 90 degree angle or the hypotenuse. Now normally this would be great information if we knew the lengths of the two sides but we don't. We only know that the sacrum is six units long. We're ultimately trying to figure out how long the projection of the sacrum will be if we use a vert vertical beam. And actually we're all we're really trying to do is prove that the projected image is shorter than the actual sacrum so we really don't have to do the math since we know that the hypotenuse is always the longest side of a right triangle but in this case since I brought it up I'll do the math just this one time because it's a cool geometry fact the ratio of the sides of every 30 60 90 degree triangle are 1 2 and the square root of 3 and since our hypotenuse is 6, the short side is half of that, or 3, and the third side is then 3 times the square root of 3. The square root of 3 is about 1.73. It's just what we're going to use for right now. It's about 1.73. So multiply 3 by 1.73, and you get about 5.2. So since 5.2 is smaller than 6, we've proven that the projected image is foreshortened by about in this case 0.8 units. Now our second triangle is also going to be a right triangle but this time our x-ray beam is perpendicular to the sacrum instead of perpendicular to the table. So we still have our 30 degree angle and now our 90 degree angle is here so our 60 degree angle is here. Now we're going to skip the math on this one but because we know the, the hypotenuse is the longest side 
we know immediately that our projected image is now longer than the actual length of the sacrum. So we need to go somewhere in between, somewhere in between no angulation, which causes foreshortening, and angulation perpendicular to the body part, which causes elongation. So how can we figure out how much angulation to use? Well, this is the, this really, this one, is the only triangle that we actually need to figure out the answer. And it's the easiest one of all. Instead of a right triangle this time, we're going to create what's called an isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle is one where two sides are the same length and thus two angles are also the same. The third angle can be more than, less than, or equal than, equal to 90 degrees, doesn't, doesn't matter at all. In our case, we know that one angle is 30 degrees and we know that one side is six units long. What we want to accomplish is for the side of the triangle that projects onto the tabletop to be exactly the same as the length of the sacrum, or in this case, six units. We don't care what the length of the third side is, we only care about the angulation needed to make the two sides equal. Well, if the first angle is 30 degrees, and the sum total of the angles is 180, and the other two angles are the same, then all we have to do is subtract the 30 degrees from the 180, leaving us with 150 and split that in half. So each angle here and here is 75 degrees or ta -da, 15 degrees from a, vertic from a vertical beam. So the question that arises next is do I have to do geometry every time I want to figure out how to project a body part to actual size? The answer is no. Let's do so we're going to do one more geometry problem just to prove it. So let's pretend that instead of 30 degrees, this angle is 42 degrees. So 180 minus 42 is 138. Divide that by 2 and you get 69 degrees, which is 21 degrees off of the vertical, or 21 degrees off of 90 degrees, or exactly half the degree of angulation of the body part. 21 is half of 42. So if you want to project an image of an angled body part without any foreshortening or elongation, always angle your tube half the amount of the degree of angulation of the body part. Cool, huh? So I know that was a lot of work to demonstrate one little principle, but now you know why and how it works, and you can th basically throw that into your little bag of x-ray tricks so that next time you're faced with this challenge, you can attack it with knowledge and confidence. So good luck and have fun. And oh, one last thing I should throw in because it is important. Um, this whole thing, it only works for certain body parts like for like long bones, especially in trauma type situations where you can't use your standard positioning. But you can't use this idea, this whole thing, you can't use it for joints and joint spaces. Um, if you want to show an opened up joint space, you have to point your beam perpendicular to the joint space. Don't worry about foreshortening or elongation because you're trying to look at the joint space, not the length of the bones themselves. So if you're shooting, for example, an AP knee on a very large patient, uh, you should point your beam perpendicular to the knee or perpendicular to the tibial shaft to open the space. Um, if you're looking at a joint, you want to visualize the joint and it doesn't matter if your bones are elongated. So just a quick little note. Anyway, thanks, have fun, and uh, thank you for visiting IHaveXRayVision.com.